Okay, so let's talk about then what are the factors affecting the velocity, meaning it's the speed of water flow. So in order to increase discharge, we say oh, we want to increase the velocity. So the first one would be channel gradient affecting velocity. So imagine yourself as the river. If I ask you to run down a steep slope, you run faster than running on a gentle slope or even uphill, right? So in the case of river, it's very rarely that we have river water flowing uphill or upslope against the gravity. So uh, very unlikely. So maybe a small section, very small section will be slightly uphill, but we won't find a large section of the river flowing against the gravity uphill. So unlikely. So either the river is changing from a steep slope, steep gradient to a more gentle gradient. Yeah. So usually steeper gradient, higher velocity, already explained that. Next one, we have the channel shape. So the winding river channel like this one, on the right-hand side, we have a less straight channel compared to this one, right? So this one is artificial straightening, we call it channelization. So making it more like uh, a sewage pipe, basically. So in Cantonese, so channelization means we have straightening, straightening the river, also widening the river, widening, and also deepening. You can see deepening the river so that the velocity will increase. Also, the riverbed will be very smooth because it's usually concrete. You can see over here, very smooth riverbed. So we'll talk about the friction later on. So compared to a winding river, a straight river will have a higher velocity on average. So again, imagine yourself as the river. So if you think about the 400 meter relay, right? Four times 100 meter. The two students running for the second and the fourth baton will run faster usually because it's a straight line, more of a straight line. And the first and the third student with the baton will be slower on average to the second and the fourth because they are running on the curved line of the track. So kind of this, this is the track. So if it's running on the curve, it becomes slower. But if you run on a straight line, usually faster. So again, imagine yourself as the river. Next, we have channel roughness. So what does that mean? So when the river is rougher or the riverbed is very rough, we say that a lot of energy is consumed to overcome the friction. So less energy is allocated to erode, to transport, whatever materials. So in that case, the river flows slower. So you can take a look of the channel A and channel B. Channel A, we have a rather smooth riverbed. And channel B, quite a lot of load, very rugged. We say the channel B has a more rough riverbed. So we have expression of the water perimeter to express the amount of friction and the channel roughness. So what is the water perimeter? The water perimeter is the total surface of the riverbed and the riverbank that is in contact with water. So wet meaning, right? Because if that rock on the riverbed and the riverbank is wet, it's part of the water perimeter because it's touching the water. Otherwise it won't get wet, right? So, but for channel A, you can see kind of short. For channel B, it will be longer because all the sediment, all the loads account into the water perimeter because all the surface of the channel is counted into the water perimeter. So you will have something like this. So kind of like the free rock fractal, right? If you zoom closer, the length of the coastline will increase or kind of, uh, let's say if we zoom in closer to this diagram, then the amount of length will increase maybe just a decimal place. That is the, the concept of fractal. If you're interested, you can also Google or YouTube videos of that. So it means that for channel A and channel B, when the weather perimeter is longer for channel B, it will have a higher friction. So the river energy for channel B will be lower. So lower energy, lower velocity, um, less erosion, less transportation, and more deposition assuming other factors remain constant. So over here, we say that kind of summarized already, longer red perimeter, 
will be lower velocity. Okay, so wheel case, you can see some of the river. So over here on the left hand side, you can see not a lot of large load on the riverbed, maybe one over here. But on this channel B, you can see it's also the water level is lower, quite a lot of large and angular load on the riverbed. So you will see just by the look of it, kind of the water is flowing a bit slow compared to this one further under here. You can see quite a lot of load on the side of the river. Maybe a little bit over here, you can see the load exposed. So again, with more load, we have longer water perimeter, higher the channel friction, more energy is used up to overcome friction, less energy to allocate for carrying sediment, for eroding the materials. So lower velocity and lower energy.